Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for Kali Mala. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will be showing a full three-player game today. Now, I do want to mention that the only reason this video is being made is because Kali Mala was selected by the contributing producer level supporters of this channel as the bonus video for the month of August 2020. If you'd like to learn more about that, then please go to patreon.com slash John Gets Games, and there you can see how you can directly support the creation of videos like this one and gain various perks, like voting on some of the videos that I make and getting to watch those videos early and advertisement free. Now there's one other thing I'd like to ask, and that is if you enjoy this video in particular, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as a subscribe button for the channel. All right, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles. I might make mistakes as I'm showing the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. Each player is thematically a member of the Kali Mala Cloth Finishers Guild, and that is centered over here in Florence. Now, as we play through the game, each one of us is going to be trying to acquire cloth. We are then going to try to export it to foreign cities using ships, as well as exporting cloth across land. In addition to that, each of us will gain prestige by helping the construction of various architectural projects in the city of Florence. Now, mechanically, the way this game works is on a player's turn, they're going to take one of their action disks or one of these neutral action disks, and they will place that onto one of the intersections between two of these different actions out here on the grid. Then they can do both of those associated actions, and these range from simply taking resources like this wood to actually exporting cloth to foreign cities. Now, in order to make cloth, players will have to use this action, and players can also go to the workshop in order to spend wood and brick that they have acquired in order to build boats, which will let them get to more of these foreign cities on the water, as well as caravans, which lets them get to these landlocked cities over here. Players can also build new workshops, which means they will weave more cloth when they perform this action, and players can spend this central action in order to contribute their resources to the construction of these several architectural projects that are ongoing. Now, a key part of this game is the fact that this token stays there, and now if another player or that same player puts a token on top of a previous token, then this player is going to perform those actions, and then all of the tokens underneath that are also going to perform the associated actions. That means if yellow went here, they could gather a wood and ship cloth, and then purple could gather wood and ship cloth, even though it's currently the yellow player's turn. Subsequently, the purple player might play on top of that again. Now, the purple player will do these two actions, then yellow will perform them, and then purple will perform these actions once again. Now, if at any point there are four of these tokens in a stack, only the first three are going to perform the actions, and the fourth token is going to be removed and placed over here at the city council, where a scoring will be triggered. This token will go into the top leftmost scoring condition, and then that condition will score, and players will check to see how well they have fit that specific condition. For example, this one checks to see how many brick resources players have contributed to the various architectural projects. This one has to do with players checking to see how much cloth they have exported to Barcelona. And this one over here has to do with all of the various resources going to that single architectural project. Now, at the start of the game, we randomly put these tokens out, and the order in which these score will be from the top left over, and then we will go to the middle, and finally the bottom row. And every time you play Kali Mala, all 15 of these conditions will score, and I'll talk about that in more detail later on. Now, once something scores, you place the token on top of it, and that signifies that that player has a seat at the city council. And whenever there is a tie when we do scorings, players are going to add up the number of pieces of art in this building over here, as well as all seats that players have, and then that is going to be the tiebreaker condition. Now, you can place art over here by performing this action, which I'll talk about later on, and as you can see, by working it so that your tokens go onto the city council seats, you will have a greater chance of breaking ties in your favor to gain more prestige and to try and win in the game. Now we are going to keep playing the game until all 15 of these conditions have scored, or until all players have used all of their action discs. In a three-player game, each player has 12 of their own discs and three of these neutral ones, so we all will take at most 15 turns in the game, but the game could go less than 15 turns if all 15 of these are scored before that happens. At other player counts, each player will have less of these actions to use over the course of the game. Once the game is over, players might gain extra prestige by competing in various bonus conditions that players are having in front of them. Each player knows one, uh, two are face down, and in a three-player game, there's one face up over here, and whoever best meets those conditions will get those points. After that, the player with the most prestige will be the winner. And again, I will talk about the details of how all of this works while we are playing, and I think let's now start the game. 
For this tutorial, we are going to play as the purple player, and because we have the starting player pawn, that means we get to take the first turn of the game. Now, the way a turn works is simple. We are going to take one of our tokens, and we are going to place it onto the middle point between two of these actions over here on the grid. Now, as you can see, we have 12 tokens in our color, and then we have three of these neutral tokens, and I'll talk about the neutral tokens later on because I think we're going to start by placing one of our own tokens down. Now, I think we want to start by placing over here, and after doing that, we can perform the two actions that are next to the disc that we just placed. Now, we can perform these in either order, and I think we'll start by performing this action here, and that simply means we are going to gain one wood resource. Now, the way we track that is we take one of our personal cubes, and we put it onto the wooden storage facility on our player board. As you can see, there are four spots, which means we can store at most four wood at any point in time. And if we had four wood there, then we would not be able to perform that associated action. Fortunately for us, we did have room, so we now have placed the cube there, and that is one wood that we can spend in the future. Let's come back to the action grid, and we performed one of the two actions, and we now have to perform the other, and this lets us spend the marble resource in order to place artwork into one of the four buildings that are in the game. With that in mind, we can look down here and see that we don't actually have any marble, however, we do have this action card in front of us. Now, at the start of the game, each player got one of these action cards, and the one that we got is associated with the marble action. Now what this means is as a free action, we can discard this card to a face-up discard pile in order to perform that action, and when you perform the marble action, you simply take one of these cubes and you place it into your marble warehouse to show that you have one of those cubes. Now if we want to place artwork, we must spend this card to get that marble, and I think we should. So the card will go to a discard pile, and now we can spend that marble by removing this cube from our marble warehouse and then place it as art into the art row of one of the four buildings that are in the game. As you can see, there are various numbers of slots on these buildings, and I think we actually want to place this over here into the city council. Now, as we play through the game, we are going to be contributing resources to the construction of these three buildings, but the city council is already built, and this is where all the scoring conditions are housed, but we can still put art on the walls, and I think we want to do that, and I'll explain why we want to do that later on in the tutorial. Now, whenever we place resources into any of these buildings, we always put it into the leftmost empty spot on the associated row. So, our marble is now a piece of art in the City Council building, and that's finished our artwork action. At this point, we've performed both of these actions, and if there were any discs underneath the one that we just placed, then those would perform actions as well, and I'll go into the details of that soon. Now, after we perform these actions, we can spend more of those action cards if we had them, but we don't, so it looks like our turn is over. This means play is going to move clockwise over to the yellow player, and now they have to place a disc down between two of the action spots on the grid. After considering their options, they want to place one of their discs right over here. Now the two actions Yellow has chosen are Gain a Wood and Ship Cloth. Gaining a Wood is simple, we've already seen that, so they can just take a cube and place it into their wood warehouse. But then for the shipping action, in order to successfully do this, they must have at least one of their ships built onto their board, and they have to have at least one cloth material in their cloth warehouses to then use that ship to export to a port city. Obviously, yellow does not have any cloth, and they don't have any ships, so there is no way they can perform this action. And whenever you go to perform an action that you cannot do, then you get to draw a random action card from the top of this deck. So they can add that into their hand of action cards, and you can have as many of these as you want at any point in time. And remember, whenever your disc is being activated, you can play as many of these as you want before or after the actions that you are choosing. Now with this in mind, if we go back to our turn where we had this art action, well, if we had not had a marble card to play, then we would not have been able to do the action, and we could have drawn the top card from this deck, and these are all random actions. They show the icons that show up on these nine different things out here. So it's essentially banking an action for the future, but it's a random action that you have to try and work into your overall strategy to best utilize. Now, if we had wanted to on our turn, we could have saved this marble and then simply said that we could not perform this art action because we didn't have any marble showing, and then that would have let us draw a card if that's something that we wanted to do, but I like the idea of placing that artwork out. Now, when we come back to the yellow player's turn, they obviously could not perform this, so they gained that one action card, and now they perform both of these actions, but they can also spend as many of these cards as they want to right now. After considering it, they aren't going to spend either of these, so that means yellow's turn is done. This means green can go. After thinking through their options, they're going to place one of their own tokens down onto this spot here. So they'll activate these two actions, and the top one lets them gain bricks. Just like the wood, that means they're going to take one cube from their supply and place this onto the brick storage facility on their board, so that shows that they have one brick. Now before they perform their next action, they would like to play a card. 
In particular, this is the action card they want to play, and that's going to get them a brick. So they can place a cube over here, and now they have two bricks. And then they are going to perform the build action. The way this works is the green player can now build up to one thing by spending their bricks and wood. Now, if you look at the left-hand side of the player board, there's actually a brief synopsis of all nine of the actions. And for build, the three options are right over here. Now, if a player spends two wood, then that is going to build a ship, which will then go into the water in their area. If they spend two bricks, that will build one of these caravan tokens out onto the board. And if they spend a wood and a brick, that will build a cloth warehouse, which they can place just like that. Now, as you can tell, right now, green just has two bricks, so they're going to spend those. And that is going to build this caravan out onto the board. Now, I just checked that this is actually a trading house, not a caravan. And the way this works is this trading house can be built into any of the three landlocked cities. As you can see, there are three spots in each of the cities for a trading house. And it's important to note that players cannot have more than one trading house in each of these three cities. So players will never be able to build more than three of these trading houses. Now, after considering the options, green is going to build this into Hamburg. And now that they have a trading house in Hamburg, they can potentially trade cloth to Hamburg. Of course, they do need cloth, and they also have to perform the transport action. And I'll talk about both of those things later. Well, Green has finished both of their actions, so that means it's time for us to go again. And I think I want to build a cloth workshop. In order to do that, we have to perform the build action. So that means we have to place our disc down onto one of these three spots. Now, in order to build a cloth workshop, that's going to cost a wood as well as a brick. And we currently don't have a brick. So I think let's place this token over here onto the same spot that the green player went. Now we can stack our tokens on top. So we just place our token like this. And then we get to perform these two actions in any order, just like normal. Now let's take the brick first, and then we can perform a build action. So we can place the brick right over there, and then with the build action, we'll spend a wood and a brick. Those will go back to our supply, and now we can build a cloth workshop onto our player board. Now, as you can see, players start with one cloth workshop, and we now have two, and you can build one more, which brings you to a maximum of three. Having more of these workshops means we are going to weave more cloth when we perform that weave action, and I imagine we're going to try to do that on our next turn. At this point, we've performed both of these actions, but as you can see, there is a disc underneath ours. That means the green player now gets to perform both of these actions just as if they had placed their token down. The only real restriction here is that they do have to go after us, because when there is a stack of tokens, you start at the top and then you work your way down. So green can gain one brick, and then they can perform a build action. Although after they gain that brick, they do not have enough materials to build anything. So for that build action, they're simply going to draw a random action card into their hand. At this point, if there was another disc underneath greens, then that would activate, but as you can see, there isn't. So that means we are done with our turn, and now the yellow player can go. After thinking through their options, they would like to place one of their own discs onto this location here. As you can see, one of these actions is a build, which we've seen a couple times already, and the other one is a contribute action. Now, they're going to start off with the build action, and actually, before they even do this... They are going to play both of their action cards. As you can see, each of them will let them do a gather one wood action. So by discarding both of these, they are going to gain two wood, which means they now have three wood total. Now they can perform that build action, and they're going to spend two of their wood in order to build a ship, and they can place that over here into the water. Now this can be anywhere in this area. It's not associated with anything on the top or the bottom. After that build action, they can now perform the contribute action. And as you can see, this shows wood, bricks, as well as marble as options. Now, when you do a contribute action, you can take one wood or brick or marble and then place that onto one of the buildings that's being constructed. At this point, the yellow player does have one wood, so they can take the cube from their wood supply and contribute this to one of those buildings. When we focus over on these buildings, you'll notice each of them has four rows. One is associated with wood, one is brick, another is marble, and another is artwork. And we've already seen how we can use the artwork action to turn marble into artwork to place cubes there. Now the yellow player has decided they would like to contribute this wood to San Mariato, and they can do that by placing it into the leftmost empty spot on the wooden row. Now, at this point, you might be wondering why yellow is doing that at all, and that's because there are a couple different scoring conditions over here in the city council that will score prestige for players for doing things like contributing wood to San Mariato. In fact, one of them is right over here. This scoring condition will give prestige to the player who's put the most cubes into this building on any of these rows, and currently yellow is in the lead. Now, I know I haven't gone into detail about how the scoring works just yet, and I will talk about that later on, but it's obvious the yellow player is trying to make a play for that. 
And it's also worth noting this scoring condition over here scores for having the most wood contributed to all of the buildings. So this cube right here is also helping the yellow player for this other scoring condition. At this point, yellow is done, which means the green player can go. And they've decided to use one of their colored tokens, and they're going to put it over here. Now that spot is next to a gather wood action as well as a contribute action, and they're going to start by gathering one wood. They can do that by placing this cube onto their wood warehouse, and then for the contribute action, they can contribute either this wood or this brick resource, and they're going to contribute the brick. Now it is worth noting that this action is optional. If the green player did not want to contribute either of these, they could just not do the action, but they would not draw a random action card. You only draw these when you do not have the ability to perform the associated action. So green is going to contribute this brick to one of the buildings, and it looks like they're going to contribute to San Mariato as well. That's likely because this building overall is going to score before the other two over on the city council grid. Once again, I will talk about the details of how that scoring works soon. Well, green is done, and that means we now get to go, and I think this is a good time to talk about these neutral white action tokens. As you can see, they're the same size as our player tokens, and on our turn, we can either place one of these or one of our player tokens down onto one of these spots. Now, we already know how the player tokens work, but these white tokens work a little differently, giving us more benefit sooner. The reason for that is because whenever you place a white token, you then get to activate both of the actions next to it two times instead of one. Now, the order in which you do this is up to you, so you could perform this one twice and then this one twice, or you could go with this one once, that one twice, and this one once, or any other combination of your choice. Now, it's important to note that this is going to get you four activations, but when you place your player discs down, it's possible that you could get up to six activations as more and more discs are placed on top. So that means that placing a white token down gets you more stuff sooner because you don't have to rely on other discs going on top of yours. But of course, as soon as this is down, it's not associated with you anymore. And if somebody plays on top of it, then that white disc underneath the stack does not actually do anything. With that in mind, we now have a decision to make. Do we want to use a white token or one of our own? Now, I'd like to go over here because that is going to get us some marble as well as some cloth. And if we go here with the white token, that will get us two marble right now, as well as letting us weave two times. Obviously, if we went with our own, we would just get one marble and weave once. And the big question is, how soon do we think anyone else might build on top of this, including us? We could also stack on top of our own token. Of course, if we do that, then we are really disincentivizing our opponents from putting their own token on top, because obviously we would get a huge benefit for it. So by stacking on top of yourself, it's possible that those tokens might stick around until you end up putting a third token on top of that spot. You only have so many of these tokens to use in the game, and this is an important part of the decision making that each of us is going through. After considering these two options, I think we're going to go with our own token. This is a very powerful action that we want to have access to when we need it, and we only have three of these in a three-player game, so let's hold on to this until a future time where when we actually play it, we can get immediate benefit from those extra actions that it gives. Well, by placing over here, that's going to get us one marble, and then we can weave once. Gaining the marble is simple. We can just put a cube into our marble storehouse. And then when we weave, we are going to take one cube for each of our cloth workshops. And we are going to place those cubes into those workshops. So as you can see, if you have just one workshop and you weave, you're going to make one cloth. But if you have two workshops and you weave like we did, we actually got two cloth for that single action. And if you have all three of your workshops out, then one weave action will get you three cloth to use. And of course, by building these workshops, you have more storage space to hold the cloth before you end up exporting it to a foreign city. Overall, I think this was a pretty good setup turn, but now that we have this cloth, we do want to export it. And in order to do that, we are going to need a ship or a trading house, and currently we don't have either of those. Now, at this point, our turn is done, but we definitely need to keep that in mind for our future turns. At this point, we are done with our turn, so yellow can go, and they've decided to place one of their tokens right over here. That means they get to do a weave action, which we've just seen, and they get to do a ship action. And of course, they can perform these in either order, and they're going to start by weaving. And since they have one cloth workshop, they're just going to gain one cloth. Now, after that, they can do the ship action. And the way this works is for each of the ships that they have built, they can send one of their cloth to a port city. And the port cities are these three out here that show that ship icon. At the moment, we can see that yellow has one ship and one cloth. So by doing this action, they can load that cloth onto the ship and then use that ship to send this to one of those three cities. It's worth noting if they had two cloth and one ship, they could still only send one of those out because each ship can only hold one cloth. 
Now, if a player has multiple cloth and multiple ships, you can send those ships to different cities. You don't have to send all of the cubes to the same one, but obviously in this case, yellow just has one of these cubes, and they've decided to ship that over to Barcelona. When that happens, they simply place their cube into an empty spot in that city. The position in the city doesn't matter, and it's worth noting that no more than 12 cloth can ever be exported to each of these cities. Well, yellow has performed both of these actions, so they are done with their turn, and that means green can go. In this case, they've decided to go over here, and that means they are going to perform these actions, then we get to, and then green gets to perform those actions again. Now, green gets to start this off by doing a brick action as well as a build action. So they can gain this brick and put it over here, and then for the build action, because they have a wood and a brick, that will let them build a workshop. And as far as we can tell, this is the only thing they can currently build. Obviously, they do have one action card, which could have another resource, but for the moment, they haven't used it. So they are going to build a cloth workshop by spending both of these cubes. And then after that, we get to perform a brick action as well as a build action of our own. So we can take the brick, and then for the build action, we can't actually build anything because we need at least two brick, two wood, or one of each. We don't have any action cards to play, so what that means is for this action, we will simply draw a random action card. Ooh, and that is nice. We've already built out a workshop so we can weave well, and that means in the future we can spend this card to do a weave action to place a cloth into all of our workshops so we can focus on going to other places instead of activating the weave action out there on the grid. Our disc is done activating, and now green gets to go, and they once again get to take a brick and do a build action. So they'll take the brick, and they don't have any legal build actions to perform, so they can gain a random action card from the deck. Well, it's our turn again, and I think let's now use one of our neutral tokens. In particular, I want to place it over here, and the reason for that is because I want to build some ships, and in order to build ships we need wood, and currently we don't have any wood. Now, as you can see, that is going to go on top of one of our other purple tokens, and these white tokens let us activate four times, so that means by placing it on top of that, we are going to activate this three times and that three times, which might seem like overkill, but part of the reason I'm doing this is because A, I would like a bunch of wood, and B, if I put one of my own tokens on top of here, that will make it so that it's less likely that our opponents actually place on top of this stack. If any one of them were to do that, they would get a bigger benefit than we would, but by placing this neutral token on top, we get an immediate bigger influx of stuff, and we have not disincentivized this stack, because if an opponent goes on here, then they will activate these once, and we will also activate it once, because that neutral token does not go again. Also, I'm not convinced our opponents want to go to this spot anyway at any point soon, so I think using a white disc now makes sense. Now, as I said before, that means we get to activate both of the associated actions twice in any order of our choosing, and let's go ahead and start with our first art action. At the moment, we have one marble, so let's go ahead and use this to place art into a building. And I think we are once again going to place it over here into the city council. Uh, once again, I'll talk about why we're doing that relatively soon once we go into more details about how scoring works. Now, after that one art action, we get to do another one with this white token. And obviously, we do not have any marble, so we get to draw a random card from the top of the deck. And that is a contribute action. That means we could spend this to contribute wood, brick, or marble to one of these buildings under construction. And that is certainly a nice thing to have in our back pocket. In fact, we could use this on this current turn if we want to, and we'll just have to see if that makes sense. Now, we do get two wood activations with this white token. So we are going to gain two wood, and we can place those into our warehouse. And then, of course, after that, our purple token underneath will activate both of these again. Now, let's start with the art action. Obviously, we don't have any marble. If we had drawn a card that made marble, we could have used it and then actually delivered it. I was hoping that would happen, but this contribute action is also a good one to have. Either way, for this art action that we are not performing, we can gain another random card, and oh, <laughs> that one's going to get us some wood. Well, we're going to get another wood with the other action here, so it appears we're probably not going to need more wood for a while. We can place this wood card into our hand, and then place one wood into our warehouse, and this is where we currently stand after performing six actions in a row. Now, I think let's actually use this contribute right now, and spend one of our bricks to place this onto one of the buildings. In particular, I'd like to put the brick into San Mariato. The reason for that being the scoring of this overall building is going to happen relatively soon compared to the scorings for the other two buildings. So getting in there early seems to make sense to me. Now, on that note, I think we are finally at the point where I should go into detail about how the scoring works. 
in order to do this, let's focus out a little bit and look over here at these stacks once again. Now, earlier on, I mentioned that the most actions you can get out of one of your discs is six because it would be activated the first time you play it. And then when two other discs are placed on top, each of those will let you activate. Now, once a fourth disc is placed on top of a stack, only the top three discs are going to score, and the bottom one is going to be sent over here to the city council to activate one of the scorings. So, for example, if the yellow player was to place over here, then they would perform these actions, green would perform these actions, we would perform these actions, and then this fourth token at the bottom would not perform any actions, and instead it would go on top of that scoring token there. At that moment, before we move on to the next player's turn, this scoring will happen, and the way this works is we simply check that condition and see who has met it the best. Now, when a disc goes up here, it always starts on the top row and the leftmost empty spot if available. That means this will be the first to score in this game, that will be the second, this will be the fifth, that is the sixth, and so on as we go through the grid. Now, this one right over here shows bricks, and that means that when this scoring happens, we're going to count the number of each player's cubes on the brick row for these three buildings. The player who has the most bricks will get three prestige, which we can track around the outside of the board. The second most bricks will get two, and the third most bricks will get one. And it's worth noting you have to have at least one cube in that competition in order to score for one of those places. Now you might be wondering, what happens when we have a tie? Obviously at this point, the first scoring will be bricks, and right now we are tied with the green player because we have both contributed one brick to buildings overall. Well, in the case of a tie, we add up the number of artwork that players have put into the city council building to the number of city council seats that they have taken. When a disc is on one of these scoring spots, that counts as a one city council seat. So at this moment, we can see that green has one city council seat and no art currently at the city council, and we have no seats but two art in the city council. So that means we have two to the green players one, and we would break the tie in our favor. That's the reason we decided to place another art over here, and that's the reason we decided to contribute that brick so that we are now tied with the green player. Now the difference between first and second place is just one prestige, but fighting for as many prestige as you can is what this game is all about, and the timing of when you perform these actions is also key. Us being able to sneak that contribute action in over there probably disrupted the green player's plans, so and they have to rethink what they're planning on doing on their next turn. Now it's worth noting there's only four spots in the city council for art to be placed, and we've already taken two of those, so we have put a lot of our effort towards trying to break ties in our favor as we continue throughout the game, and that means we should probably put effort towards trying to tie as much as we can. Of course, if we do better than tying, that's also fine, but we do want to leverage the artwork that we've placed into that city council. Once we have scored one of these tiles, the game will continue on as normal, and as you can see, this is probably why the yellow player delivered some cloth to Barcelona, because the second scoring of this game is going to check who has it delivered the most cloth to Barcelona. So that is a bit of a priority, and as you can see, at the start of each game, we randomize all of these tokens, so the order in which we score will be different from one game to the next. Now, at this point, obviously, we have not hit a scoring just yet. Right now, this token is under there, but as soon as any token is placed onto the stack, that will initiate a scoring, and when that happens, the green player will get a city council seat. That means the green player is somewhat incentivized to make that happen by placing on top of there, but we'll just have to see if that ends up being a thing they want to do. Now, the final thing to mention about scoring and city council seats is what happens when one of these neutral tokens is the fourth token at the bottom. In this case, the active player actually takes a color disc from their supply and they swap it out with that white neutral token. That means they get the white neutral token and they can use that later on in the game and they place their color disc down onto the appropriate spot in the city council. And if that player does not have any of these color discs, they just swap the neutral token with one of their other color discs that has already been placed out here on the action grid. Our turn is done, which means it's now time for Yellow to go, but I think before we perform their turn, let's talk about how the game ends, as well as how we get our final scores. Now, the game is going to end from one of two different options. The first is we are going to end the game at the end of a full round once all 15 of these scoring conditions have been met. That means it's possible that we might play a turn or two where there are no more scoring opportunities because all of them have happened. Now, the reason you might want to do that has to do with final scoring, which I'll talk about in a second, because now let's talk about the other way the game can end, and that happens once all players have used all of their personal and neutral action tokens. In a three-player game, we all had 12 of our own tokens and three of the neutral ones, so that means we had 15 tokens total, which means that no matter what, this game will not last longer than 15 turns for each of the players. Now, once the game is over, we can go into final scoring, and the way this works is we are going to score up the various goal cards that are in the game. 
As you can see, there is a face-up goal card next to the side of the board, and in a three-player game, you always put one of these face-up, so we all know that this is going to be performed, but then at the start of the game, we all got three random cards and got to select one. As you can see, we decided to select this card, which says Lisbon, and then our opponents have their selected cards over here. Now, once the game is over, we are going to reveal all of these. Each of these gives five prestige to the player with the most cubes, three points to the second place, and one point to the third place player, and you break ties just like normal. So we all know that the Santa Croce endgame card is out which means at the end of the game, the player who has contributed the most wood, brick, marble, as well as placed the most artwork into Santa Croce will get five prestige points. This means all of us are more incentivized to place cubes over there, but when we look over here, Santa Croce isn't going to score until the middle of the game, so it seems all of us are prioritizing the scoring of San Mariato earlier before we start putting some cubes over there. Now, we don't know what the goal cards are from our opponents, but we know that we have this one for Lisbon. So we have a higher reason to put more cloth into Lisbon, but we have to make sure to not be too obvious about this, because if we put a ton of cloth into Lisbon, our opponents might suspect that that is our hidden end game scoring card. Once again, once the game is over, these are revealed, and the prestige goes to the player who fits it the best. So just because we know that Lisbon is going to score, it does not mean that we are necessarily going to get these points. We have to make sure to vie for that, and of course our opponents are thinking similar things with the hidden endgame scoring cards they each have. Once we've scored all four of those endgame cards, the player with the most prestige will be the winner. Now at this point, I think I've taught most of the rules to the game, and let's jump back into the game and see what the yellow player is going to do. After considering their options, yellow is going to place their color disc down over here. That will let them do a contribute action as well as a weave action. And when they weave, they're just going to make one cloth in their one workshop. And they don't actually have any cubes to contribute. So instead of contributing, they'll take a random action card. After that, green can take their turn. And they have decided to send a color disc over there. That's going to get them one marble, which they'll put into their warehouse, and then they will weave. They have two workshops, so that means they're going to get one cloth into each of those workshops. And after that, we get to do both of those actions as well. So we can gain one marble, and when we weave, we also get two cloth. And we've got a ton of cloth now. We just need to get boats or trading houses in order to deliver these out to various cities. At the moment, green does have a couple of action cards they could use, but it appears they've decided to hold these, and that's going to finish their turn. This means it's time for us to go, and I think we should probably try to build ships. Now, I say ships plural because we actually have three wood and one wood card, which means if we use this, we'll have four wood, and we could spend two wood twice to build two ships. Of course, in order to build two ships, we have to perform the build action twice, so we could use one of our two remaining white tokens on either of these spots, or we could send one of our tokens over there. That will let us activate these twice, and it will cause a scoring, and the green player will get a city council seat, but I think that's going to happen anyway, and I think this is actually the best play for us. So we're going to place right on top of that, and that means this fourth disc on the bottom will not activate. And we get to start by doing a brick action as well as a build action. So let's take a brick, and then we will build by spending two of our wood, and that will build us our first ship of the game. After that, the green player gets to perform these two actions, and because their disc has activated, they could also play as many cards as they want from their hand. The first thing they will get is one brick, and then they can build a workshop if they want to, because they have a wood and a brick. They don't have to, but of course if they don't, they will not get a bonus card, and they figure, you know what, they're ready for it, they may as well do it. Uh, they don't have any ships, but they do have one trading house, and this is going to increase their ability to make cloth even more. After that, they could play cards, but they've decided not to which means it's now time for us to perform these actions again. So let's take one brick, and then before we perform the build action, we can use this wood card here. We can reveal it and gain one wood. Now the build action happens, and we actually could build a trading house, or we could build a ship, or we could build our third workshop. In this case, though, I think building the ship makes the most sense. So let's spend these two wood, and now we have two out of our three ships built. It's worth noting that there is no way to lose anything that you have built throughout the game, so these are permanent ships that we will have for the rest of the game. After our activations, we've reached the fourth disc, and the fourth disc doesn't activate as I explained before. Instead, it will go over here, and we are now going to do the first scoring of the game, where we check to see who has contributed the most bricks to the buildings that are under construction. 
In this case, we have contributed one and green has contributed one. We were, I think, lucky that green did not have any contribute action cards in their hand because then they could have contributed another brick instead of building that extra workshop. Fortunately, that was not the case. So with this tie, we go to the tiebreaker. We add up the number of the council seats to the amount of art currently hanging in the council. And green has one towards the tiebreaker, whereas we have two. So that means we're going to break the tie in our favor. Now, it's worth noting, if there was still a tie, then the player who has the most council seats over here breaks that second tie. So that means if the green player was able to put another city council seat down, then they would break the tie in their favor because these council seats are a little more powerful than they are when we go deeper into the tiebreakers. Now, there's more tiebreakers after that, but I don't think we need to go into that unless we actually bump into it in the game. So, as it is, we are winning this scoring, and that means we will get three points. So, we go up to three. Green is in second place, so they will get two points, and then the yellow player would get one point for being in third if they had at least one brick contributed to a building, but as of this point, they've only contributed wood, not brick, so that means they do not get any points for this scoring, and the scoring is now over, and we can see that the green player has one city council member, and the next scoring will check to see who has shipped the most cloth to Barcelona. Well, scoring is done, and that means our turn is over, and now it's time for yellow to go. Now, after considering their options... They've decided to place one of their tokens on top of this stack over here. That's by far and away been the most popular spot over here on the board. And remember, at the start of the game, these are all randomly placed. And it just seems like this is a particularly potent spot, considering bricks is one of the things that you need to build, and it's right next to that build action. Now, as you can see, yellow will take these actions, then we will, and then the green player will, and then we're going to immediately score again with us getting one council member seat. Now, we can start off with the yellow player, who will get a brick, as well as a build action. So, they can place the brick right over here, and currently they don't have the ability to build anything, but before they perform that build action, they can reveal this brick card. So, that is a second brick, and now they can spend the two brick in order to build a trading house, which they can place out onto the board. This can go into Trois, Bruges, or Hamburg, and they've decided to join the green player over here in Hamburg. After that, we get to take brick and perform a build action. And we could do them in either order, but we may as well take the brick. And then for the build action, it looks like the only thing that we can do is spend two brick to build a trading house of our own. Now, we don't have to do this, but if we don't, we're not going to get a consolation prize of a random action card. So I think let's go for it. We'll spend the bricks. And then we could go over here to the last spot in Hamburg if we want to compete with all of our opponents. Hamburg is going to be the first of these three cities to score, so that is probably the reason why our opponents have gone over there. But of course, we could also place onto one of these other cities in order to try and build up a majority that our opponents will not be able to overcome. Honestly, at this point, I don't see a strong reason to go to one of these versus the fact that Hamburg is going to score first, especially considering we currently have a strong position in the tiebreaker. So let's go over here and maybe we can get some extra points by tying some players over here in Hamburg. After that, Green can perform these two actions. So they will get one brick and they could play cards from their hand if they wanted to, but it looks like those are not working out for them in this exact moment. So for the build action, they're simply going to draw another random action card and add that into their hand. Those actions are done, and the fourth disc is ours, so that's going to go over here, and now we are going to score Barcelona. Now that means we simply count up the number of cloth that's over here in Barcelona, and the player who has the most will get three prestige. Now as you can see right now, yellow is the only player who is able to deliver to Barcelona, and this is likely the reason why they went onto that stack, because this is the only stack on the board that let them force a scoring before either of their opponents were able to ship over here. The yellow player saw that we just made two ships, and they pretty accurately assumed that if we got another turn, we would probably use those ships to deliver cloth into Barcelona to compete with them and score prestige points. So the yellow player was able to force this scoring before we were able to leverage our new fleet, and that means the yellow player has the most, which is going to give them three prestige, and then no one gets second or third place because no one else has any cloth over here in Barcelona. That scoring is done, and the next one has to do with San Mariato. Now for this, we're just going to check the overall number of cubes that are in the wood, brick, marble, and art section of this area. And it's possible the scoring could happen very soon if anyone places on top of the stack. And depending on our positions, it's also possible that this will stall out. Either way, the yellow player is now done with their turn, which means the green player can go, and they're going to use one of their neutral tokens to go over here in order to double activate these two actions, and then their own token is underneath. That means they are going to be doing each of these three times. So they're going to get three wood, and they will have three opportunities to contribute resources to the buildings. 
Now, technically, they can't perform the wood action three times in a row. Uh, with that white token, they can perform it two times in a row, though, and now they have two contribute actions before they activate their disc underneath that white token. With these two contribute actions, they've decided they are going to contribute both of these wood, and we're not too surprised to see both of these go into San Mariato. That puts them in the lead right now for the most cubes in the next scoring, and that is also helping them out with the wood scoring that's going to be happening a little while from now. That is going to check the amount of wood across all three of these buildings, and green now has a majority in that as well. Well, green has finished the white tokens activation, but now they get another wood, and they can perform another contribute action. So they can take the wood, and now they can contribute a wood, a brick, or a marble. Now, in terms of the brick, it does not make a lot of sense for them to place that down considering the brick scoring has already happened, although there might be other reasons to do it because perhaps their hidden goal card is associated with San Mariato, and that would just help them when competing for that goal. We don't know what that is, though, at this point. And considering the art scoring is coming up soon, they've decided not to spend this marble as marble. They'd rather place this as art before that scoring happens. So they've decided to contribute this wood. This has to go into Santa Maria della Fiore or Santa Croce, and they're going to go to Santa Croce mostly because we all know this public endgame goal is going to give five prestige to the player with the most cubes in Santa Croce, so green figures they may as well start pushing towards that. Green is done with these actions, and they're still not going to play any of these cards that they have in their hand, so that means it's time for us to take our turn. Now, I was thinking about placing onto this super popular stack to force another scoring for San Mariato, but that was when we were tying for first. Right now, we're tying for second, but I don't feel quite as uh, pushed in that direction. I think we could probably do some other things, considering Green's last turn put them into a pretty solid first place at this point. Honestly, the big thing that I want to do is ship some of this cloth out now that we have these two ships, so I think no matter what we're doing, I would like to perform this action here. Now we could go here in order to make more cloth and then ship, or we could go there to get some wood and ship, and considering we already have a bunch of cloth and we have one of these random action cards in our hand that lets us do the weave action, I think going here is going to be the right play. We could send one of these white tokens there if we wanted to, but for now I think we are okay using one of our own tokens. So we'll place there, and then we can ship as well as gain one wood. We'll start by taking the wood, and then when we ship, each of the ships that we have can take one of our cloth and send it to one of the port cities. Again, these do not have to go to the same city, but they could if we wanted to. So we're going to place these two out onto the board. And realistically, we probably want to put these into Lisbon or London. The reason for that is because Barcelona has already scored, and we don't have any knowledge about whether or not the endgame card for Barcelona will be in play. Now, one thing we do know is that Lisbon is going to give five prestige to the player with the most cubes over there at the end of the game. With that in mind, we could put both of these over here if we wanted to. And honestly, I think that's going to be a good plan. We can see that Lisbon is going to score before London. And if things were inverted where London scored first, then I think this would probably be too obvious to our opponents that we had this card. In that case, we probably would have gone one and one. But for now, they're none the wiser. They figure we're probably just trying to vie for first place when Lisbon scores. And of course, we know that this is going to help us out even more. So that's finished our shipping action. And I don't see a reason to use our weaving action card just yet. So we finished our actions. And then, of course, the yellow player is underneath our token, so they also get to perform both of these. That means they will gain one wood, and then when they ship, they have one ship over here and one cloth, so they can ship this cloth to any port city of their choice. In this case, they've decided to go to Lisbon because that is going to be the next one to score. Well, our turn is done, and that means yellow can go. And they've decided to send this token over here. That is going to get them one marble, and they can do a build action, but they don't currently have any build options, so they're just going to get a random action card, and that finished their turn. This means green can go, and they've decided to place a token over here. This will let them place art as well as send a cloth to trade cities, but before they do either of these, they've decided to play two of their action cards. The first of these is going to be this one, which will get them one brick, and then the second one will let them do a build action so they can spend these two brick in order to build their second trade house. This must go into Bruges or Troyes because players cannot have two trade houses in the same city, and there's no room in this one anyway. Now, they've decided to go to Troyes. That one is technically going to score before Bruges, although both of these are not going to be scoring for the cloth in them until the later stages of the game. 
After that, green can spend one of their marble and place it as art into one of these buildings. And they could put it over here to increase their lead. They could also put it over there to try and increase the chance they get the five prestige points at the end of the game because this is the one card that's face up. But they've decided the game is still early. They would like to take one of these spots to better vie with us for the tiebreaker condition. After that, they can now perform the first transport action of the game. The way this works is the player can send one cloth to each city that has one of their trade houses. That means Green can send this cloth over here to Troyes, and they can send this cloth over there to Hamburg. So as you can see, when you do the transport action, you are not going to be able to send more than one cube at a time to these three landlocked cities. Well, Green is done with a pretty productive turn, and that means we get to go. And I think let's send one of our tokens over there. This will get us one marble, and it will also let us do a build action, and the yellow player will also get to do those two things. So we can take a marble, and that means we have two of them, and we can use these to contribute to those buildings, or we could turn them into art, potentially. Now when it comes to building, we can spend our wood and our brick, and that lets us construct our final workshop. And as you can see, when we weave in the future, we're going to make three cloth, and it does not get more efficient than that. And we also have a weave card in our hand that we can use when we feel like it's time. I don't think this is that moment though, so now we're done and yellow can take these actions. Which means they will gain one marble, and then they could play this in order to potentially be able to build something. But it looks like that's not going to happen. This means that build action is going to get them a random action card. And then after that, they've decided to play this action card. That lets them take one of their marble and place it as art into one of the buildings and they're going to put it over here into San Mariato, and that means they have now broken the tie with us for second place, and if this was to score, they would get two prestige to our one. It looks like that's all that Yellow wants to do, and that means our turn is done, so Yellow can take a main turn, and they've decided to go to this ever-popular spot right over there. This means they will get a brick, as well as a build action twice, because they have two of their tokens on top of each other, then we get to do these, and then we will have another scoring, with the green player gaining another council seat. So, yellow will gain one brick, and then they get to do a build action, and they're going to spend their wood and their brick in order to build their first workshop, and the main reason they focused on this is because they were feeling a bit behind compared to the rest of us with how fast we were weaving our cloth. After that, they are going to gain another brick, and they have another build action they can perform. Although in this case, it looks like they are not going to be able to perform it, so they will get a random action card. They could potentially play that card, although it looks like they are not going to. After that, we get a brick and a build action. So we can put the brick over there, and we don't have any build action options, so let's take a random action card. Ooh! <laughs> and it's a build card. That means we have pocketed this for the future, and that's pretty nice. We can do a build action when we really need to, without having to go next to the build action over there on the grid. That's all of the activations, and then the fourth disc was the green one, so that means green will become a council member for the third time, and now we are going to score San Mariato. As you can see, green has the most cubes, so they are going to gain three prestige, bringing them up to five. Yellow was able to sneak in at second place there with two compared to our one, so yellow will get two prestige, and then we will get one for coming in third place. Well, it's time for green to go, and they've decided they would like to activate this spot over here. That lets them weave, and then they can perform a contribute action. And they'll start with the weave. That is going to get them three cloth, because they do have all of these workshops made. And then before they do the contribute, they are going to play this card to get them one marble, and then they can use the contribute action to contribute that to one of the buildings. After considering their options, they're going to put this down into Santa Croce. Next up, yellow can weave as well as do a contribute action. And they'll start by weaving. That is going to get them two cloth. And then before they perform their other action, they are going to play this bonus action card, which lets them do a transport action. This lets them place one cube for each of their trade houses, so they can place that right over there. After that, green is done, which means we can take our turn. Now we could go over here to cause another scoring, but that scoring would be in Hamburg, and the green player is currently in first place, so they could have, I guess, done that on their last turn. Perhaps that would have been a good thing for them, but either way, we're just going to play this through. Now I don't think that makes sense for us, and I do think transporting would be good to try and get one of our cloth into Hamburg before that scoring happens. 
That means we should place onto one of these three spots to do that transport action. And the question is, do we want to place more art, do a contribute action, or gain another brick? Well, the art competition is coming up pretty soon, but if we go there, we are going to let the green player do both of these things. Currently, they don't have any marble for the art action, but they have a bunch of cloth, which would give them a pretty strong transport action. Honestly, I don't think I want to give green actions right now, so I think we are just going to go over there. I suppose if we wanted to, we could send one of our neutral discs instead. That would let us transport both of these cloth into Hamburg because of the two transport actions. That would put us in the lead, and that's somewhat important considering right now the tiebreaker is tied between us and green for the first level, and then green is winning the second level since they have more council seats. That does sound fun, but it also leaves me wishing we had another one of these trade houses out here to be more efficient with those transport actions. Well, if there was a guarantee that by placing this white down we would actually stay in the lead over here, we'd probably go for it, but I don't feel like it's guaranteed, so let's just place our regular token. That will let us do a contribute action as well as transport, and we can transport first. After that, we can contribute, and we have a marble as well as bricks to contribute. I think contributing a marble is probably a good idea, actually. The reason for this is because we currently haven't contributed anything to Santa Croce, and this is not only going to be the next overall one of these buildings to score, but we also know the player with the most cubes over here is going to get five prestige once the game is over. Green has two, and I think we should start contesting this by placing our marble cube here. Well, that's going to finish our turn, so now yellow can go. And they've decided to place one of their tokens right over here. That will let yellow do a transport action as well as turn a piece of marble into art. They're going to start with the transport. They only have one trading house, and they do have a cloth, so they are going to place that over there. And then they're going to take this marble and turn it into art. And just like us, they would like to head over here to Santa Croce to start competing for this prestige. After that, green can do both of these, and they are going to transport both of their cloth. One will go to Hamburg, and the other one will go to Troyes. Now, green does not actually have any marble. So for this action, they're simply going to draw a random action card, and that has finished the yellow player's turn. This means green can go, and they've decided to place their color token over here. Now that is on top of one of their discs and one of ours, and it's associated with making marble as well as cloth. So green is going to do both of these twice, and then we get to do them both once. This means green will gain a marble and then three cloth. Then they will do that again. And then we will gain a marble and then three cloth just once, though, because we only have one of our tokens there. That has finished green's turn, so now we get to go. And I think let's place one of our tokens over there. That will let us gain a brick as well as do a transport action. And we can start by taking the brick, which means we now have two. And then we can use our workshop action card to build. In this case, we are going to spend both of our brick. And that will let us build our second trade house. And I think let's place that into Bruges. After that, we will transport, and we can send one of our cloth to Hamburg, and then one cloth over here to Bruges. After that, yellow can go, and they are going to place one of their neutral discs over here. They're placing on top of their own discs, so that means they are effectively going to do these actions three times. In this case, they're going to start by gaining cloth twice, so that means they are going to gain four cloth total because they do have two workshops. And then they can ship twice, and they have only one ship, so with each of those ship actions, they can send one of these cloth cubes out. After considering it, they're going to place both of their cubes over here into Lisbon. And now their token at the bottom will activate. This is going to get them two more cloth. And I suppose when they delivered that cloth, they could have been more balanced and taken one from each of these so that they still have two open slots in each of their workshops. Now they get to ship one more time. And they've decided to try and lock Lisbon in by putting yet another cube there. So they have two more than we do, although we do have more cloth workshops and ships than them, so it's possible we could overtake them. We'll just have to see if we can make that happen, but for the moment yellow is done with their turn, so that means green can go. After considering their options, they're going to place one of their tokens here. That will let them gain a wood and contribute twice because of their two discs. So they can gain one wood and then contribute, and they've decided to contribute one marble. And they're going to place that over here into Santa Croce. And then for their next disc down, they're going to gain another wood and then contribute another marble. It appears they're going very hard on Santa Croce. Once again, that makes sense, though, considering we know that this endgame prestige card exists. 
Well, it's now our turn, and I think I want to try and snipe Hamburg. Uh, right now, we are in a tie with all of the other players, and we are losing the tie to green and winning the tie to yellow. But if we are able to score over here and actually put a new council seat onto the council, then that will break the tie in our favor, and we'll get three prestige points for this spot. I think the green player probably could have won this earlier on in the game, but decided against it, and they're probably going to regret that now that they see what we're doing. Now we're going to place over here, and that does mean that we are going to gain one marble, and we will also make cloth once, so that will get us three cloth. And this is pretty good for the green player. They are going to make a marble as well as three cloth twice. So green has 12 cloth, and they literally can't hold any more of it, and now it's time for us to score Hamburg. Once again, there is a three-way tie with all of us having two cubes over here, and the tiebreaker is going to be us adding the council seats to the art in the city council. We have four to the green player's three, which means we break it in that favor. Remember, if there was a tie with the first tiebreaker, then the second tiebreaker is us checking to see who has the most council seats, and green was winning that tie until, of course, we were able to place this new council seat down. That means we are going to gain three prestige, which brings us up to seven. Green is going to get two because they do break the tie with yellow, since yellow does not have any council seats or art. So green will get two prestige, bringing them to seven, and yellow will gain one. Well, it's now time for yellow to go, and they are going to place over here. That will let them build and gain a marble, Then we could do the same, and then yellow can do that again. They'll start by taking a marble, and then they can't build since they currently have just one brick. So they are going to take an action card, and then we can build, but we don't actually have any materials, so we can take an action card, and we found something that makes us marble, and then we are going to make marble, and we are full up on marble, so we don't really need this card at the moment. After that, yellow is going to gain a marble again, and then they are going to play the action card they just drew, which is going to get them a brick. They can place that over here, and then with their other build action, they could spend these two brick to build a new trading house. After considering these two options, they're going to go over there. All right, yellow is done, which means green can go. And they've decided to place their token over here. That lets them transport and then make art. And then yellow can do the same, and then green can do that again. They're going to start with transportation, and they will send a cloth over there. And then they don't have to, but they're going to put a cloth over here in Hamburg, which is interesting because Hamburg has already scored. And that means maybe they have the Hamburg card. Perhaps they are telegraphing that. But even if that's the case, they've still decided to do that. Now they also get to make art. And they're going to place this into the city council as they continue to vie for us with the tiebreaker. After that, yellow can do these things. So they can transport this cloth there, and considering green put an extra cloth over there, yellow has decided they're going to do that as well. Once again, Hamburg is not going to score again at the city council, but yellow is now betting that the green player's card is for Hamburg, and if that's the case, they still want to vie for it. Yellow can also place art, and they're going to place this into Santa Croce. Next up, green can transport again as well as make art again. And considering green has so much cloth over here, they've decided they're going to do a full transport, going to both of these once again, putting another one into Hamburg. So now it seems very likely that this card is for endgame scoring in Hamburg, and they are going to place this into Troyes, where they have a solid lead over everybody else. I'm sure at this point they are wishing they had a trading house in Bruges as well. Now they can make some art, and they've decided to place this into Santa Croce, so there's just one art spot left in there. Well, let's finish the green player's turn, so that means we can go. And the next thing to score is art. Currently, we have two art compared to the three of yellow and the three of green, so we are coming in last place on that. And we do have a pile of marble over here, so perhaps we should place onto this spot to get some wood, which we could use to try and get our last chip built, and also compete over here for the art. Now we could place a neutral token down or one of our own. The neutral token would let us make three art and get three wood, whereas our own token would let us do two and two. Although two and two would still put us in the lead for art over here, and I think holding back on these until later on in the game is probably going to be better. So let's place this over here. We will then gain one wood. We can then place art down, and I think we should definitely put it into Santa Croce. We can then gain wood again for our token down at the bottom there. And then let's make some more art. And I don't think we should put it into San Mariato because that one has already scored. So let's instead go to Santa Maria del Fiore. Just like that, we now have more art than everybody else. 
Our turn is done, so yellow can go. And they've decided to go on top of this stack. That means we are going to have a scoring, and the green player will gain a council seat from that. But before that, yellow can transport and then make art. Green can do that, and then yellow can do those again. Yellow is going to start by transporting this cloth over there to Bruges, and then when they make some art, they're going to place this into Santa Maria del Fiore. After that, they are going to reveal this card, which is going to get them one marble, and they can use that marble later on this turn. Before we get to that, though, green can transport as well as make art. They don't have any marble, though, so they're going to draw a random card. And then for transportation, they are once again kicking themselves for not having a trade house here in Bruges, but they figure they have all of this cloth and they may as well use it because they have lots of opportunities to make more cloth. So they're just going to keep on delivering. Uh, they'll put this one over here and that one will go over here into Trois. And I'm sure no one is going to be vying for first place in Trois against Green, but second place is still worth two points and that certainly could make it worthwhile for one of us to place a trading house over here before the game ends. After that, yellow can transport again, but they don't have any cloth, so they're going to draw a random action card, and then they will make art with this, and they'll put it right over there. After that, we are now going to score for art. As you can see, yellow has one, two, three, four, five cubes. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, and the green player has three. So yellow has the most, which means they are going to gain three points, bringing them to nine. We have second most, so we get two points, also bringing us to nine, and green gets one point for being in third. Oops, I just realized that was all off camera, but as you can see, this is where our scoring markers currently are. Now, at this point, we've performed one third of the overall scorings, and the next one will be for Lisbon, where the yellow player currently has a lead. Yellow is done, so green can go. And they've decided to simply go over here. That lets them build something and then contribute. And they'll start by building one boat. They will get rid of two wood, and they have their first boat of the game, and then when they go to contribute, they actually don't have any resources, so they're going to take a random action card. After that, yellow can build, but they don't actually have any resources at all, which means they also can't contribute, so yellow is just going to draw two of these random action cards. Green is done, so we can go, and we have at most four more turns for this game. Now we know that Lisbon is going to score next, and we are two cubes away from tying with yellow, and we would definitely win the tiebreaker, so I think we should ship this turn. But unfortunately, in order to ship, the yellow player will get to ship something as well, although they don't currently have any cloth, so we should certainly not go onto that spot, which would let yellow make more cloth. With that in mind, I think let's just place over here. That means we are going to gain a wood, and then we can ship. Uh, we can ship these two over there, so we are now tied, and then after that we get to do this again. Uh, that means we get another wood, and then we can once again ship up to two cloth, and I do think we should. Now remember, we have this card which gives extra prestige at the end of the game for Lisbon, so we certainly want to be in a majority there. Uh, currently we are winning compared to yellow, but of course we're not sure when the next scoring is going to be. There's quite a few three stacks out here, but uh, we don't want to take that for granted. So I think we should definitely put at least one more cube over there, and then let's look to the future and put this one into London. After that, yellow can go. They are going to gain one wood. And then they're going to spend one of their numerous action cards, and that one will actually let them make cloth. Now that means they can ship, so they are going to, but they can see if they go to Lisbon, they are certainly going to lose the tiebreaker. So they've decided that they're actually going to push towards London. They, of course, don't know that we have the scoring card for Lisbon. Now, even if they suspected we had the scoring card for Lisbon, if they went here, there would just be two spots left, and they are not in a position to try and ship to both of those before we do because we have two boats compared to their one. Because of that, they are simply going to place this in London, and that has finished our turn. This means yellow can go, and they've decided they're actually going to place over here. That means a scoring is going to happen, and yellow can gain one wood. Then yellow can ship this if they want, and they have decided to do that. And then we get to do both of those things twice, although we are full up on wood. So that means we are just going to take a random action card for the first wood, and it's a shipping. Uh, then we could ship this if we want, and I figure we may as well. Uh, competing in London is probably good. We don't want to make it too obvious that we care about Lisbon. So let's place this over there. Then we draw another random action card because we are still full up on wood. And then I think let's play this action card to make some cloth before we do this other shipping action. That is going to get us three cloth. And then we can ship up to two of those. 
And I figure let's keep going hard on London, considering that's going to score, and we want to make sure to be in a majority there. We could have also put those into Lisbon to lock in, getting first place on that at the end of the game, but it's probable that we can go there later on. All right, after that, this is going to go up here, and Lisbon is going to score. We are in a majority, so we get three points, which brings us up to 12, and yellow is in second place, so they gain two points, and green is now starting to regret not getting into the boat game. They do have one boat now, and that's likely the reason yellow made this scoring happen. They wanted to get this counselor down there into the council, and they wanted to make sure that scored before green was able to get even one point off of it. All right, yellow's turn is done, so green can go, and the next thing to score is going to be wood that has been contributed to the buildings. Green currently has three compared to yellow's one and ours zero, so that means green is pretty motivated to make that scoring happen right now. With that in mind, they are actually going to use their neutral token. That is going to make a scoring happen, and then they are going to gain two wood, and then they can contribute something, and they are going to contribute this wood, and they've decided to put it over here. Uh, they still feel pretty good about this competition over here. And then they can contribute again, and they've decided to go for it. They'll put this over there, so they are now winning the tie for scoring this one, at least if that was to happen right now. After that, their green token lets them gain another wood, and then they can contribute again. The only thing they could contribute would be this wood, although they do have these three cards in front of them. It doesn't look like they're going to play any of these, but one thing they could do is save their wood to try and get another boat out, although right now there's just one more spot to actually score, and they do have one boat, so they are just going to deliver this over here to make it more likely that they get the three points for having the most cubes over there when that does score. After that, we have another scoring, and as you can see, now that we have some big stacks of tokens over here, the scorings can come quite quickly. Now that is going to score wood. Green has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so they easily have the most, bringing them to 11. And yellow has 1, which is enough for them to get 2 prestige since they are in second place. So that was a very lucrative wood they contributed right there. All right, it's time for us to go, and I think let's place this neutral white token over there. That will let us do two contributions and do two transportations, and we will do another contribution and transportation after that. So actually three of each. In this case, I think we should start with the transport. We could send this over there, which means we are tying yellow and winning that tie. And then we can go ahead and contribute a couple times. Now, I think what we want to do is contribute marble. The reason for that is because the marble scoring has not happened just yet. Now, we unfortunately cannot add marble to Santa Croce over here, which is the next thing to score. But we can add it over here to the last of these buildings, which won't score until the end. But still taking up those spots is good. And that helps us towards this scoring, as well as the marble scoring, which is a few away. So we've done one transport and two contribute actions, and this white marker gets us one more transport, but we don't have any more cloth. So we can draw a random action card, and <laughs> it's a transport action. That kind of makes sense, but it's not really what I was looking for. Now, after that, our token underneath will go. We once again can transport, but we don't have any cloth. So let's draw a random card, and <laughs> that's another transport. Okay, well, I think it's likely we're not going to end up using both of these by the time the game ends. At this point, we have five of these action cards in our hand, and let's use this one. That will get us one marble, and then for our final contribute action, we can take this marble and add it right over there. And now we have four contributed marble, which is more than the three that green has done. This also puts us in the lead for contributions over here at that building. So overall, I think that was a pretty good turn. Now we only have a maximum of two more turns left in the game, and it's now time for yellow to go. After considering their options, they're going to use their last colored piece and go over there. That will let them construct and contribute. After that, green can do those, and then yellow can do those again. Now, they are going to start by constructing a boat, so they will spend two of their wood. And then when they go to contribute, they don't actually have anything, but they are going to spend this card to get themselves one brick, and then they can use that to contribute this over here to Santa Croce. And just like that, they have three cubes to our two, so they are now in second place. After that, green can do both of these things. They currently don't have any resources, though. And after looking at their cards, they're not going to play any. So it looks like they are simply going to draw a random card for this action that they can't do and draw that random card for the contribute action that they can't do. After that, yellow can once again go. And they have no resources and just one card. So it looks like they are also going to be drawing two more cards. They'll draw this one first. And then they'll draw another one. And that has finished yellow's turn. This means it's time for green to go. 
Now they currently have a whole bunch of these action cards in front of themselves as they are considering what they want to do. After considering it, they are going to place this white token out and they're going to put it right over here. That is going to cause a scoring and then green will pick up two pricks and they can also construct up to twice and then yellow can do each of those things twice. So green will take two bricks and then they are going to immediately use those with that build action in order to make another trade house. There's only one more spot they can put this because they can only have one trade house in each of these cities. So they'll put that right over there. And then for their other build action, they don't have enough resources to make anything. So they'll draw yet another one of these cards. After that, yellow will gain a brick and potentially build and then gain another brick and potentially build. So they can place this brick here and then they can't build at the moment. So they will take a random card and then they will take this brick here. And now they can spend these to place their last trade house out if they want. And they've decided they're going to go for it. This will be placed right over here. And now it's time to score Santa Croce. We look over here and green has one, two, three, four, five cubes. Uh, yellow has three and we have two. So that means green has the most and that gets them three points, which brings them to 14. Yellow is in second place, which is two points. And we are in third place, so we get one point. After that, the next thing to score will be London. And we're looking pretty good over here with our cubes. All right, we can go and we have just two of these tokens left. We have a couple of transport actions and a ship action in our hand, as well as this action, which could get us a marble. And I suppose the marble scoring is just two away. It's worth reiterating that every one of these scorings will happen, even if all players use all of their tokens. At that point, we simply score the rest of these things before we score the hidden goal cards. Now, at the moment, the next thing to score is London, and we're currently in the lead. So I think we should probably make that scoring happen by placing onto one of the numerous three stacks that are now out here on the board. I think the one that will be best for us is this one. That is going to let us gain two marble. We will also make cloth twice, and then green will do those once. So we can take a marble and then get three cloth. Then we can take another marble and get three more cloth. Now, of course, at this point, we could use any of these cards that we currently have in our hand. And I know that I just said on our last turn that we're probably not going to use both of these, but I think we actually are. Let's use both of these to do two transport actions. With the first of these, we can put a cube right over there and another cube into Hamburg, which at this point, I think we are all just assuming is going to be scoring. And by doing that, we are tying for second place. And with the second transport, let's put this into Bruges. So we are increasing our lead there. And you know what? Let's just put another cube here into Hamburg so that there are no other spots. And if this does end up scoring, we have locked it in. And if this does not end up scoring, then kudos to the green player for tricking both yellow and us. Well, I think we're done spending our cards, and now the green player is going to gain one marble, and they will make cloth, so they will get three. And now they could spend action cards if they want to, and they have quite a few. Considering London is about to score and green isn't there yet, they certainly want to play this ship card. They currently only have one ship, so that will let them put one cube into one of these port cities, and they're going to put this into London. And then it looks like in this huge hand of cards, they have another ship card, and they're going to spend that, and then take another cloth and put that into London as well. So they're tying the yellow player, and they are definitely winning the tiebreaker. After that, they do have four cards left, but they're not going to use any of them, which means it's now time to score. We can put this token over here, and we will score London. We have four compared to the two of both of our opponents, so we will get three points. Then green is winning the tiebreaker with yellow, so they get two, and yellow gets one point. So it looks like everyone is currently tied at 16 points. Now the next thing we will score are cubes that have been transported. Currently, it looks like the green player is in a pretty significant lead there, and we are in second with yellow in third. Of course, we're not going to score that until a token goes over there, but it seems like that's probably going to happen soon. Well, our turn is done, which means yellow can go, and the only options they have are placing these neutral tokens down, which will let them double activate each of the actions they place next to. After considering their options, they are going to place over here. Now that will let them make cloth three times and ship three times because of the top token getting two of each, and then their token is down there at the bottom. So they're going to start by making cloth twice, and then they will ship twice, and they have two ships. So that means with each of these actions, they can send two cloth out. 
After considering the options, they've decided to put all four of these into London, which just scored. So I think by them doing that, they're telegraphing pretty heavily what their hidden card is. And of course, by doing that, they filled all of the spots in on London, so nobody can take first place away from them. It's also worth noting, we are going to score whoever has the most cubes shipped uh, a little bit later on. So adding these cubes is certainly good for that. Now, yellow does get to make cloth again, so they will get two and then they get to ship again, so they can send both of these out. And considering we put this in when we didn't need to, they've decided to place these over here in Lisbon because they have a hunch that we might have that hidden card. We of course do, and thankfully, there is still one spot left that we can try to fill in at some point, uh, at least before the end of the game, or before another opponent is able to squeeze a cube in there. Well, yellow is done with their turn, so that means green can go. And uh, they've decided to place over here. Now that has kicked out a white token, which will cause a scoring, and then green can contribute and gain wood twice. So they can take a wood and then contribute something, and they will contribute this marble, and then we'll get to that in just a second. They can also gain this wood right here, and then they are going to contribute that. So they have a wood and a marble they can contribute, and they're going to put both of them over here. After that, we can do a scoring, but this is a white token, and it must be a player color. This means the active player can swap this out for a token in their supply, so green has essentially gained a new white token, and then they will put their own counselor right over there, and now we will score for the transport action. The green player has 5 plus 5 or 10 cubes down here. We have 8 cubes placed, and yellow has put 5, so that means green has the most transported cubes, and that will get them 3 points. We have the second most, getting us two, and yellow gains one point. Well, green is done, and that means it's our turn, and this is actually going to be our final turn of the game. Now, the next thing to score is going to be marbles contributed, and we do have a couple of marbles, so I think we should place this adjacent to the contribution action to make sure that we can contribute as many of these as possible. Now, I do like the idea of forcing a scoring after we do this so that we can lock in that first place, and I think we're going to go over here to make that happen, even though that does help the green player out by giving them yet another one of these counselors. Now, that is going to get us two wood, but of course we are full on wood, and we have been for a while, so for each of those we are going to gain a random action card. This one would let us do a build action, and this one, ooh, that one lets us make cloth. We didn't have either of those yet, and making cloth and then potentially shipping some of it before the game ends could be quite good for us. Now at this point, we have simply tried to gather wood. Now we can contribute twice, and I do think we should contribute marble, and let's put one of them into this building, and that fills it up. And the other one, I guess, has to go here into San Mariato, because we do want to add that in in order to have more marble to compete for that. After placing that down, we have five cubes compared to green's four, and that's important for the tiebreak because I think we're losing that tiebreaker now. Green is going to add another counselor, and yeah, they certainly have more over here than we do, so adding that in there is important. Now, I think before we move on, let's use more action cards, and in particular, let's start with this one. That will get us three cloth that we can add into our warehouses. And then after that, let's play this one. That will let us use two of our wood to make our final ship. And then let's place this, and that will let us do a shipping action. And since we have three ships, we can place three of these cubes out. And that is going to help us for the shipping scoring that is going to be happening soon. And it could help us out for some other things. In particular, the scoring for Lisbon. We know that we have this card hidden from our opponents, and we want to make sure that we are at least tied with yellow because we are going to beat them on the tiebreaker. So that cube was effectively two extra prestige for us at the end of the game. And then I figure let's put these other two cubes into Barcelona that might end game score for somebody and it's just more cubes for the shipping scoring. Well, that's finished this disc and now the green player can contribute once and gain a wood. They'll start by gaining the wood and then they will simply contribute one wood and they now have to figure out where to put it. This can go into either of those buildings and they've decided to go over there. They were tied with us and winning the tiebreaker, but they figure they may as well go ahead considering we might be able to squeak another cube in here before that ends up scoring. Speaking of scoring, let's now score marble. We have one, two, three, four, five, six contributed. Green has one, two, three, four, which means we are going to be in first place. Unfortunately for yellow, they were not able to contribute any marble before this happens. They went much harder on the art. Uh, so that means we will get three points, bringing us to 21, and green will get two points, bringing them to 21, and yellow does not get anything for that scoring. The next thing to score is going to be Twa, and our final turn of the game is over. This means the yellow player can go, and they're going to place a white token over there. 
Now they are going to start by making cloth twice with that white token. And then they can contribute twice, although they don't currently have anything to contribute, so they will draw these cards two times. After that, the green player can do both of these things. They will start by making cloth. And they've decided after that they are going to contribute a wood over there to help with their majority for that endgame scoring. It looks like that is all the green player is doing, and now yellow can once again do both of these. So they will gain two cloth. And then they, again, don't have anything to contribute, so they will get a random card. Oops, I suppose I shouldn't have shown that, but either way, this goes into their hand. And now they're going to start playing action cards. They're going to begin with two of these transport cards. And with each of those, they are going to place a cube into Trois, as well as Bruges. After that, they're going to play a shipping action card from their hand, and use each of their ships to deliver cloth, and those have to go to Barcelona, so they'll place those over there. Well, it looks like that has finished the yellow player's turn, and we did not have any scorings, so now it's time for green to take the final turn of the game. After considering their options, they are going to place this right over there. That will let them do two transports as well as two contribute actions. And before they do any of those, they're going to use this to get themselves one wood, and then with a contribute action, they are going to contribute this over there. With the other contribute action, they have nothing to give, so they will take a random card. And now they can do two transport actions. They are going to send a cube into Trois and Bruges twice with this. And then after that, they are going to use this sailing card they just picked up in order to send one cube out. And they'll put that into Barcelona just in case this one ends up being an endgame scoring spot. Green is done with their actions, and now we can do each of these once. We can contribute wood, so I figure we may as well. This is the final turn of the game. And then we can transport, and again, I figure we may as well. Let's send this cloth right over there, and we have this final card in our hand that is not actually going to help us out. So yeah, it looks like we are done, and that has finished the final turn of the game, and we don't have a scoring that happens directly off of that action. At this point, we've used all of our action tokens, so no one will take any more turns, and the next thing that happens is we are going to score all of the remaining tiles at the city council. So let's focus in, and Twa is next. Green is an easy leader over there, getting them three points, and then yellow is in second, getting them two points. After that, we can count the cubes that have been shipped. It looks like green has three, so they're definitely going to be in third place. Next up, yellow has six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and we have eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So it looks like yellow is in first place there. That's going to get them three prestige, and we are in second, so we will get two. After that, we can score Bruges. We have a lead here, so that's going to get us three prestige. Yellow is in second, so they get two, and green is in third place, so they gain one. And finally, we can score this building over here. Green has six cubes. We have five, and yellow has two. So green is in first, getting them three prestige. We are in second, and yellow is in third place. Now, after that, we've scored all 15 of these conditions over here, and now since the game is over, we can perform the final scoring with the goal cards. The way this works is we take all of our hidden goal cards and we add those over here to the face-up one that we've known all game. So this is going to be the one that we had, which is Lisbon, and then it looks like London and Hamburg were the other two, and I'm pretty sure we deduced those as the game was going on. So each of these is going to award five prestige to the player with the most cubes there, three for the second place, and one for third place, and we'll start over here with Santa Croce. Green is definitely in first place, and then we have three cubes, and yellow has three cubes, and we are easily winning the tiebreak. Yellow did not do a good job of getting their counselors down here into the city council. So, green is going to get 5 prestige, we will get 3, and yellow will get 1. After that, we will score Lisbon. It looks like we are tied with yellow, and we are winning that tiebreaker, so we will get 5. And then yellow will get 3, and no one else gets the third place part, because only two colors are in here. After that, we can score Hamburg. Green is in the lead, and we are in second, with yellow in third, so green will get 5. We will get three, and yellow gets one. And finally, we have London, where yellow did do a big push, so they are in first. And then we are in second, so we get three. 
and green is in third place, so they gain one prestige, and just like that, we have finished scoring, and it looks like we have won the game with 42 prestige, green has 40, and yellow comes in third with 35, and that completes one full three-player game of Kalimala. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.